Hey, what's up, guys? Um, I want to talk about something that is probably, I don't know, one of the like core facets of what I feel like I'm doing every day, working with people one-on-one, what I'm observing in people just from the programs, the boot camps, the challenges, the feedback I'm getting on social media, like all of it, is we need to talk about relationships. And <laughs> today, I want to talk about relationship with food, because we have the most screwed up relationships with food and our bodies I have ever seen it like so let's think about any relationship how does it what what's successful in a relationship respect love communication listening uh checking in how you doing can't giving a shit caring <laughs> like basic stuff and this is what I see and it, it I really think it's rooted in the fact that we don't know how our freaking bodies work we like when we think food we either are like, it's like, it goes all the way to like orthorexic, psychotic, you know, obsessed with food and health, like too far, or it goes to this, like, I don't even care. And, and, and that I don't care realm is because none of us know how our bodies work. So like it stops with how it tastes in my mouth. That's it. No one's even thinking about like, what is going to happen inside my body after this goes past my mouth. <laughs> okay. So Um, what I, what I've noticed, what I've noticed is that there's like, there's, those are the two polar extremes. It's, it's like, I don't give a shit or I give way too many shits and I'm like psychotically obsessed. And what I've, what I've really been having to help people get to in terms of this relationship is like, just like you would have a relationship with a kid or your significant other or your mom or like any healthy relationship. It's what do you need? What do you need? I I'm here for you. I got you. Right. And so this, I don't care thing is neglect. So we have the neglect people. It's just like, whatever. And the the neglect people are ultra abusive. In my opinion, it's neglect and abuse go hand in hand because it's this, Oh, why am I not vacuuming? (laughs) Um, I am, (laughs) I can just talk freely. I'm always vacuuming. (laughs) Um, so, um, what I was going to say is like this, the people who neglect their bodies and just really don't care end up being these like abusive assholes, in my opinion, that when stuff starts to go wrong in their body that they've neglected for 30, 40, 50 years, now they're like, oh, stupid me. Oh, look at this. Oh, my body's falling apart. It's like, it's your fault, homie. It's your fault. <laughs> You're being an asshole. You're being an abusive, neglectful asshole to your body instead of saying, Hey, I am super grateful for this gift because guess what? None of us even had to earn these bodies. These bodies were a freaking gift. And that's part of the reason I think we're so ungrateful (laughs) sometimes because like what happens when somebody just hands you something? You just are like, you take it for granted. But we got to think about it. We have to rise a little bit in our consciousness and recognize that we have been given a tremendous gift because this body allows us to experience everything that we experience in life. You like sex? You couldn't do it if you didn't have a body. Do you like food? You couldn't do it if you have a body. Do you like hugging, kissing, playing, running, jumping? All of it is because of your body. So when we can lean into this energy of gratitude, like, holy cow, that is pretty cool that I have a mouse that allows me to taste chocolate and cheesecake and apples and oranges and all these things. And, you know, sex, (laughs) nobody wants to talk about it, but we're pretty freaking grateful for that. You know, that's because of our body. And so when we have that gratitude in place, so I've been trying to tell people, I'm like, I don't look the way I look because I put pressure on my body and I'm trying to, I I literally don't care how my body looks. That's expectational love. That's uh, what did they call it? Conditional love. Yes. It's putting expectations on your body. I will love you. If you look like this, I will love you. If you do like that. And if you don't do what I want, then I don't love you. It's conditional love. And that's where most people are at with their body. But when we get into unconditional love and gratitude, like, holy shit, body, thanks for the doing the immune system thing and the lymphatic system and like literally auto healing when I have wounds and I don't even know how you do it. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you for allowing me to taste food and enjoy life and experience every single thing that I experience in this life. Thank you. Oh, oh, maybe I can take care of you in return. Okay. So that's the one side of people like that I see as a huge problem. It's this neglect and abuse and conditional love energy. Actually, I'd say across the board, just my experience working with people day in and day out in the trenches, 
hearing from you guys on social. Like this just, I'm so immersed in it. I would say almost literally almost everyone is in a conditional love relationship with their body. You're not enough. And not until you do like this and be like, I want you to, well, I love you. <laughs> or it's this super neglect thing. Like I could give two shits and it's like, well, <laughs> that's cool. Hope you're not like that with your kids or the other people in your life. And that's truly, I kind of look at my body as like, it's like a relationship because I'm super grateful for it because it helps me experience everything. <laughs> okay. The opposite end is like the super conditional love. And these are like, this is like when you're like so obsessed. Do you guys know what orthorexic means? Orthorexic is actually an eating disorder. And it's when you're like so obsessed with health that it's like taking away from your life. And honestly, like, I'm not saying I'm diagnosing orthorexia with this, but in my opinion of like someone who's teetering at least on orthorexia is if you go to a restaurant and you know, it's got canola oil and like farm raised meat and all this stuff. And you can't even enjoy your experience with the people that you're with. You're teetering on that line. And I see this so much on the health optimization when it's taking away from your quality of life because you're so obsessed with health, fitness, everything has to be perfect, 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 perfect. You're living in fear. It, your body is not that weak, by the way. I understand there's some people with like really legitimate, you know, disease states and stuff like that. I get that. Um, but I'm talking about just the, the health optimization junkies. And it's like, if it says natural flavors in it, you heard that was bad from Dave Asprey one time and you literally like won't eat it. And your whole life is like super stressful because you like feel like you can't eat anything because everything has to be so perfect. I'm so sick of this guys. Cause I'm so I'm in that community and health and it drives me nuts. I have had to heal so many people help not, I don't heal it, but I help facilitate healing and so many people's relationship with food because they freaking turn into a maniac trying to be perfect all the time. And this person said that kale will kill you. And this person said meat will kill you. And this person said, don't eat that ingredient. Holy shit, dude. My, my ex-husband's mom. Well, I mean, grandma is like, I freaking love her. She's the best. She's like 90 something years old. She's been eating peanut M&Ms and Navajo tacos and just, you know, regular American food. And she's 90 something years old and she is freaking with it. And you know what? You know why I think that is? Because she doesn't stress out about everything. She has a really deep relationship. She goes walking with her girlfriends every day. She goes in a little bowling league. She has super deep uh, relationship connections and she doesn't sweat the small stuff. I'm like, I guarantee you, you being stressed about, oh, it has natural flavors. I can't eat this. Uh, what am I going to eat? Nah. It's going to kill you faster than just freaking eating it. <laughs> okay. So there's that in the things too, where it just gets way too perfectionistic. Right. And literally many times I have helped clients. Like if you haven't read the biology of belief from Bruce Lipton, you can manifest in your biology what you think is going to happen when you eat something. And I have witnessed this happen over and over again because we get deep into the subconscious mind and my work that I do with my clients. And they're like, holy shit, <laughs> that stuff doesn't bother me anymore. I'm not saying that will happen every time, but it definitely does happen. And I have witnessed it over and over again. And so think about that. If everything you're eating, freak man, it depends on the dogma you've been exposed to. If you've been really hard in the keto world, you, I mean, I have read stuff from people. It's like, these are like doctors and they're saying like every carb you eat is inflammatory poison. That's going to kill you because it inflames your cells and all this stuff. It's like, it doesn't matter if it's quinoa and strawberries or a piece of cake. It's the same thing. And I'm like, that is bullshit. That is bullshit. You're listen, I won't get it. If you guys want me to talk about carbs being inflammatory, you are only getting half of the story on that. We need some inflammation in the body. Our body makes its own antioxidants, glutathione from that process. Well, so yes, too much inflammation, bad. Some people need to do keto to reduce inflammation, but this like dogmatic, like strawberries are just as bad as chocolate cake. I'm just like, are you freaking kidding me? <laughs> do you want to fight? <laughs> You're going to get put people in these like orthorexic eating disorders. <laughs> oh, I hate dogma and nutrition. So anyway, my point is like, here's how you get to a healthy place. This is my professional opinion on how you get to a healthy place. You build a relationship with your body. And the best way to do that, in my opinion, is you need to start meditating and when you sit down in meditation, if you have issues with like, you just don't give a shit about your body or you're too hard on it or whatever, you have all these expectations of conditional love, 
just tap in real quick and say, what do you need, buddy? What do you need? See what comes up and freaking try it. See what happens when you listen. I guarantee you can get some real quick. Okay. And then when you're starting to be an abusive asshole to your body and you're looking at your legs or your butt or your belly and you're like, Ugh, this disapproving You'd be like, ew, nasty. No, you would not. Right? You, and so when that moment happens, instead of the abusive asshole thing, start saying like, okay, what do you need? What do you need? What do you need? Start being a kind person to your body. Treat it like another person. Try that out. And think about the thought. thoughts that you're telling your body. Think about the thoughts you're telling yourself as you eat certain foods. It is a freaking like travesty to me that there are people out there that think if they eat an apple that they are decreasing their health. Now, granted, yes, if you have type 2 diabetes and a spike in your blood sugar and all, it, there, there's exceptions. But I'm just talking general population. There's information out there saying you, you eat a grass-fed, grass-finished cow that was raised in love. It has a perfect omega-3, omega-6 ratio full of vitamins, minerals, iron, all these things that your body needs. But somebody told you that that was bad. And so now every time you eat it, you think it's bad. Somebody told you that an apple was bad, that it's inflammatory, that it's, you know, all these scary things. And so now it's, it's so sad to me. That the universe is abundant with us. The planet is just like growing. All this food is just everywhere, especially right now. <laughs> we have access to so much food and we sit here and there's like these dogmas that somebody else put in your brain. So I would say question, question, question that. How does that feel to me? Does that actually feel true to me? Or did that get programmed into my mind from somebody at one point? I watched it. I've watched the deprogramming happen over and over and over. And yes, you can manifest negative outcomes in your body by believing that something is going to hurt you. Yep. That's what the placebo effect is. That's what it is. <laughs> so anyway, that's my thoughts. Start looking at how you take care of your body. It's not this, bu I call it bullshit fake self-love and I can't stand it. Bullshit fake self-love sounds like this. You're like sitting there deep inside, like being super abusive and neglectful and, you know, unrelenting with your body. But you're like, I, I love my body. But in your quiet freaking moments or somebody rejects you in dating, you're like, it's because of my body. That's called bullshit, fake self-love. You're just bullshitting yourself. It's not real. And the other side is just being super hard on your hard on yourself. So start looking at how you really see yourself and your body. Guess what? You and your body are not like the same thing. <laughs> so you can treat it like this other person, this other relationship in your life. And when you start doing that and you eat something that makes you feel really terrible, you're not like guilting yourself. You're just like, Oh, okay. Noted body. Got it. You don't like that right now. Okay, cool. I'll minimize that stuff. What do you need? What sounds good? Sweet potatoes sound really good. Okay. <laughs> you know, so it's like start building that relationship. Because I have, I have been the full gamut on this thing. I have been in the very conditional love, not enough, all that stuff. And I got really fit like that. I really did. And a lot of people do. And you know what? It was nothing changed. Same exact relationship. Almost worse even by the time I got really fit. Because <laughs> now the pressure's freaking on, baby. It doesn't change a damn thing. So, no, you don't have to be fit to build your relationship with your body. Because even if your body is very obese right now, if you're getting to your goals in a place of scarcity and not enoughness and all that stuff, which you can, you're still going to feel that way when you get to your destination. It will not change at all. So it starts with now. It starts with building that relationship of, Hey body, what do you need? I got you. We're going to do this together. Dude, good job on that push up set. Freaking good job. Dude, you're so powerful. I'm so grateful. Right? Start working on that relationship. It just starts to get easy. Oh, you need more sleep. Okay. I hear you and I'm actually going to do that instead of just, rejecting you. You know, I personally do not like the David Goggins mentality of like, listen, you little bitch, I'm in control. There's a, it's good for us to use our higher consciousness to push our body 
right? It's like you got, but it's in like an empowered way. It's like you got this. Let's freaking go. Like a dog with your tongue out of your mouth. Like, come on, let's do this. Like that mentality, not like shut up, you little bitch. You do what I say, nah, dude. That's abuse. That's abuse. So that when you can start getting into that empowered place of I like I'm with you in this and I'm gonna help you see what you're capable of and I'm also gonna listen when you're telling me things like you need more sleep or you need more water or you need more food or you need whatever I'm gonna do it that's how you build a relationship with your body so just wanted to share that because it's like pretty much nobody <laughs> in my experience has a good relationship with their body so <laughs> sharing some things I've learned in the trenches